Are you considering having an aesthetic procedure performed? Confused by all the information out there? Welcome to It's a Young Thing, where Nurse Paula Young arms you with the knowledge on all things cosmetic and aesthetic. And now, Nurse Paula Young. Welcome back to It's a Young Thing. I'm Nurse Paula Young. Thanks so much for joining me this week. And you know, you think that uh, skincare products don't do much for your skin. You go in for a facial, maybe a chemical peel, and you got an esthetician sitting there, and they're always trying to push a product to make a sale, and all you really want to do is kind of lay there and enjoy the facial but you know as we age cellular turnover is really important you know you're starting to notice wrinkles and enlarged pores and sun damage and dull looking skin and the best product to do this is a retinol product and if you think that all retinol products are the same think again people get really confused between retinol products and it can be so confusing when you see a product in the drugstore or maybe at a cosmetic counter compared to the ones that you see in your doctor's office they both have a derivative of that word retinol on them the main ingredient in it and these class of vitamin a derivatives so retinol is really a vitamin a it's a yellowish oil obtained mainly from distilling resin if you're a chemistry major if you're not a chemistry major, then we'll move on to the next one. Retinoids. Now, this is a group of substances and it's related to vitamin A and it functions like vitamin A in the body, but it has to be converted many times by your body. And tretinoin is a chemical that's related to vitamin A and you see this a lot on labels. It's used mainly to treat acne. And Retin-A is something I'm sure you've all heard of. That's a brand that's used for treating wrinkles and sun damage. So let's talk a little bit about the history of retinols. And so retinoid tretinoin or retin-A, that was developed back in the late 60s by a PhD. His name was Albert Kligman, and he was a professor of dermatology at the University of Pennsylvania. And he and his colleague developed this for acne, but they found when they used it on their patients that it had a profound improvement on wrinkles and sun damage. So they went ahead and got smart, got an FDA approval for this compound, and they marketed it under the trade name of Renova. It's actually was the first FDA approved topical treatment for fine lines and wrinkles. Now, here's the difference between retinol and retinoids. Your over-the-counter drugstore products, they contain a form of retinol. It's an ester form. Like I said before, it needs to be break broken down, converted by your body and your skin cells into a retinoic acid so it provides some sort of benefit to your skin. But the more conversion it's going to take to get that to form into a retinoic acid, the weaker the product really is. So let's talk about the action. You know, what's cool about it is that it can multitask. It acts directly on the DNA in your skin cells, and it basically can tell them to do anything they want them to do, like be a younger, healthy-looking cell, and it can do that. It's also an antioxidant. It can break up the free radical damage that causes wrinkling, and that actually causes a slowing down of the signs of aging. It can also boost your collagen production and help fade discolorations from sun damage. It can mainly increase cell turnover. So these dead skin cells that we talked about in a previous podcast in microdermabrasion, you know, you're constantly shedding them and revealing the brilliant skin underneath and clearing these dead skin cells. Well, guess what else goes with them? Debris and oils from your pores, which can also loosen up these blackheads that are really tight. And the main thing it does too is it thins the top layer of dead skin cells, that stratum corneum, and it thickens that smoother second epidermal layer. And that makes your skin look more firm and more luminous. Now let's talk about the difference between what you get in your doctor's office versus over the counter. So prescription-based retinoids, they have a higher concentration of retinoic acid. So they come in strengths of about a half of a percent to 2%. And these can be up to 20 times stronger than what you buy over the counter. So when a concentration of retinoid acid is put on your skin, it doesn't lose its strength like over-the-counter products. So the higher level of retinoid, retinoic acid that you have, it provides a quicker benefit, but sometimes at the cost of increased dryness to your skin, redness, peeling and flaking of skin. And this is why a lot of people quit using a retinol product when they're prescribed one by their doctor. You know, this is why you're started at a very low dose with applications spread apart. You don't do this every night. You gradually increase them in percentage of the product, or maybe you have to back off. Now you have to be monitored with your, when you're on these retinol products and you have to measure the progress of what your skin can tolerate to just to receive these benefits. 
all without getting like the side effects of the products. So now these over-the-counter formulations, they'll give you optimal results in a couple of days, but because they're so weak, you have to give them at least six weeks to start smoothing out any fine lines or discolorations. And you have to be patient because it's going to take at least six months to a year before you can see the benefits from the increased dosage. Now, skin does become tolerant to the initial effects of retinols. So over time, you know, sensitive skin products, you have to start out really slow to basically train your skin to be able to tolerate that level before you can move up to a higher concentration. Now, how do you use these things? Well, you only use them at night. You have to wash your face first. You wait 20 minutes before applying. And the reason why you only use them at night is because sunlight can deactivate vitamin A, retinoic acid. So you can't use them during the day. So you want to start slow, incorporating it into your nighttime regimen, use it every other day. Um, it's pretty much where all skincare experts tell you to start. This lets your skin gradually acclimate to the more potent level of the product. You can also mix it in with your nighttime moisturizer or facial oil or um, facial butters to decrease the irritation, like the flakiness and the redness that can often come along with using a retinol. Now, if it burns after you apply it, wash it off. Wait 15 minutes. Wash it off after 15 minutes because you're still going to get some benefit from it without having the irritation that's being associated with it. So then you want to use it about twice a week for two weeks, and then you can increase up to about three times a week. Back off if you've noticed irritation. Once your skin tolerates that particular dosage level at three times a week, stay there. If you are a waxer, like if you wax your upper lip and chin, or you have any kind of laser treatments or even microneedling, don't use a retinol product for at least five days prior to and after your treatment. And you have to let your your uh, practitioner know that you are on a retinol product. Another important thing that you want to note when using any retinol is that you don't need too much. Just a pea size amount is all you need for your full face. And another thing you can do if you're a first timer, try it on the back of your hands, on the tops of your hands or your neck or chest, just to see how you're going to react and respond. And after you find that basic starting platform that works for you, continue to apply your retinol to those areas as well to help defend the signs of aging, protect your skin, and correct any sun damage that started. So in summary, retinoid products is one product that you truly do need to see a skincare specialist for. If you don't start out right, and you don't have a good beginning experience, you're not going to continue with them to the point that you really begin seeing the benefits. So this is a product that is truly worth its weight in gold in the cosmetic medicine. It is the gold standard product used in all aesthetic practices. Now, prescription strengths can be more costly than your over-the-counter ones, but think about it. The concentration of these retinoid acids that you get in the drugstore versus what you get in the, in the uh, doctor's office, you could be paying more money in the long run because you have to buy more of those over-the-counter products just to get up to the strength and the dosage and the effects of a prescription-based retinol product. So another reason you need to be constantly monitored by your skincare expert is because they're going to know when to advance you up to the next higher concentration or when your skin just can't tolerate a dose and be able to guide you backing back down. So if you really want a gold standard product, retinols is the chemical and the drug and the product of choice. Just make sure that you are compliant with the product and make sure you seek some advice from your skincare specialist. That's all I have for you this week on retinol products. I really do think that you should all investigate them. They're great products. They can work for a lot of different treatments. If you have fine lines, if you have wrinkles, if you have brown spots, you have discolor it is a product that can really work well for you. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to It's a Young Thing with Nurse Paula Young. If we didn't discuss a topic you're interested in today, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes so when we do, you don't miss it. The cosmetic aesthetic world can be confusing. We're here to arm you with quality, truthful information from our many years of experience. For even more info, youngmedicalspa.com. This has been a Steve Mittman social media creation. Steve Mittman social media.com. 
creators, producers, participants, and distributors of this podcast disclaim any liability in connection with the material expressed herein. This information should not be substituted for individual medical counseling. Information on this podcast is not intended to diagnose or prescribe treatment for any condition. It is intended for educational purposes only, based on the research and experience of young medical spa. Discussion of specific treatments is done only in an office visit directly with the patient. Contact our office to schedule.